Hey guys, Steve Lacerra here. Today, we'll talk about patch bays. A patch bay is a panel with a series of jacks on the front and the back. The jacks on the back connect to all of the gear in your studio. Ideally, every input and output from every device in your studio gets connected to the patch bay so that you don't have to go messing around in the back of a rack to change signal flow. If you only have one microphone and an interface with one or two inputs, you probably don't need a patch bay. But as your collection of gear grows, a patch bay becomes more important, enabling you to reroute signal flow very easily. The most popular patch bays are quarter-inch TRS and TT. A typical quarter-inch TRS patch bay has two rows of 24 connectors for a total of 48. Most TRS patch bays also have TRS connections on the rear panel, which, as we'll see in a minute, is not always the case for TT patch bays. The cost of a TRS patch bay runs around $125. TT patch bays use a much smaller connector, about half the diameter of a quarter inch TRS. As a result, most TT patch bays have two rows of 48 jacks for a total of 96 connections. You'll need less TT patch bays to wire up your gear, but they're considerably more expensive. Prices range from about $275 for a TT bay where the wires must be soldered to the back of the jacks, up to around $1,000 for a TT bay that has DB25 connectors on the rear panel and offers switched normaling on the front. The connections on the back of a patch bay can be a bit of a mystery because once everything's wired, you don't see them. You just deal with the front panel. Let's see if we can clarify this a little bit. Here's a Neutrik quarter inch TRS patch bay, two rows of 24 jacks front and back. By removing the front panel, we can see the little circuit cards that connect the rear jacks to the front. The output from a device gets connected to the rear panel on the top row, and then a second cable gets connected from the rear panel bottom row to the input of the device. After that, we'll just deal with the front panel. Since this is a graphic EQ, we'll want the top row and the bottom row isolated, meaning that they're not connected to each other. If they were, it would cause a feedback loop in the EQ. Patch bays are generally laid out with outputs on the top row and inputs on the bottom row. In this example, we have the outputs from a Focusrite microphone preamp on the top row, and directly below them are the inputs to an Avid HDIO interface. On a typical day, there's a pretty good chance we'll want to route signal from that mic pre into the interface, so we'll create what's called a normal. A normal is when signal from the top row is automatically routed to the device in the bottom row without need for a patch cable. That's the purpose of these little round switches. Here's an example with an iPad, a mixer, and a patch bay, where we'll create a normal. We'll take the output of the iPad, connect it into the patch bay, and then normal it into the mixer. We'll start with two cables coming out of the iPad for stereo, and we'll connect them to the top row, rear panel, jacks one and two. We won't need to make any connections on the front panel. We'll take another pair of cables and connect them from the bottom row of the patch bay to the inputs of the mixer. If I push play on the iPad, we should hear music. As you can see, there's nothing plugged into the front panel of the patch bay. We've got signal coming from the iPad into the top row of the patch bay through that little circuit card out of the cables on the bottom and into the mixer. If the patch bay gives me the ability to plug cables into the top row without interrupting the normal, we call that a half normal. A half normal patch point allows us to split the signal so we could send the iPad to another powered speaker or anywhere we want without interrupting the original signal flow. If I plug into the bottom row, the iPad will get disconnected from the mixer. That's called a fully normal patch point. 
the top row gets disconnected because an input can only take one signal at a time. The patch bay is making a decision for me. It realizes that I've plugged cables into the bottom row, so I won't be using the iPad. Instead, I'll be replacing the normal with something else, maybe a synthesizer or another sound source. The patch bay is now waiting for me to feed a different signal into the mixer on those two wires. In the meantime, it has automatically disconnected the iPad from the input to the mixer. On this type of patch bay, changing the normals is a little bit difficult. You have to remove the front panel and then rotate the circuit card so that the gray jack is in a different position. A guide printed on the patch bay will show you where to position that gray jack if you want to normal or isolate the top row from the bottom row. If I turn the card around, connect the iPad to the top and the mixer to the bottom, I won't get any signal flow because they're isolated. I'll have to patch a cable between the bottom row and the top row. <laughs> 